So, what is in the box? Let's open that up. Received this today. I will be unboxing it. Okay, let's open up the sleeve here. Let's dive straight into this unboxing. I want to give you my first impressions as we go. Just a question. Would you care for an unboxing? No? Okay. I kind of thought so. So as always on this channel, let's do things a little bit differently. And that right after the trailer. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sascha from Switzerland. So grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So yes, I already unboxed completely unceremoniously my S30. I already shot with it. And in this video, we want to talk about my experience and we want to especially look at pictures. Pictures of the sun, pictures of nature, pictures of the moon, of nebula and so on. So really see how does it perform. But if you really haven't seen any unboxing video of it, you could go with any of these videos that I showed at the start. But if you ask me which ones to take, I would take the one of Luke, because in his video you can see his newborn son. And all the other creators, I don't know why, but they have not accomplished that. No newborn child. So anyway, joke aside, let's start with my experience. So first of all, I got this S30 from Sivo directly. It's a pre-production model and I can keep it. But I have the full rights to say whatever I want. And as you know, I always do. Second of all, what differentiates me from all the other creators who have already issued a video is that I have no comparison. I never had an S50, I never had a dwarf. That might be good, that might be bad, but it's different. So I cannot compare, that's probably the bad part. On the other side, it's also really a new experience for me getting this smart scope as it would be for most of you when buying a smart scope. So what are my first impressions beside now the pictures? We will look at that in a second. First of all, I'm quite impressed how still kind of heavy, how massive this thing is. Sometimes people or even I refer to it as a toy, but when you hold it like that, it does not feel like a toy. It feels, even it's kind of small, but it feels kind of something serious. The second point is what fascinates me in the last time, if you have seen other videos covering Sivo stuff, what really amazes me is the ease of use. And that's no exception here. I got this today, I think at 3 p.m. And now it's, it's 11 p.m. So eight hours in between. And from the moment I got it, I unboxed it, downloaded the app, and I immediately started to shoot. I didn't read any manual, nothing. I just followed the app and it was so easy. And given that it's so close before Christmas, at the moment on Facebook and all forums, which I am, I see so many parents asking, well, this Presser telescope, this Celestron telescope, this whatever, they want to make a gift for their children. And as we all know, if you do not have a good Dobsonian or something, it's usually disappointment for the children because they do not see that much of the sky. And personally, I feel that this year is just the perfect gift for this Christmas. For beginners, for children, with $350, it's really affordable. You, you will not get anything decent on the telescope side for $350. And with this here and with the ease, people can really discover the sky. And I think this is so cool. When we talk about democratizing astrophotography or even astronomy, that's for me the real answer. It will never replace 
a full-blown rig and it shouldn't and it's stupid to make these comparisons. But if you take it for what it is and when you compare the price point to what it can deliver, it's just amazing. And you could say that I'm spoiled with all the, the rigs that I already have, but I had a lot of fun today shooting with it. And I think when I'm finished testing, sometimes I might actually use it while the big rigs shoot the whole night the same object. And I will definitely make this available to my son whenever he wants to discover the sky. And with that, he has a possibility to really go through the objects on the iPad and look at whatever he feels like. Today, we even tried Saturn. He wanted to see Saturn with it. I was like, yeah, this will not work. But at the end, yes, it was, it was tiny, tiny. But we could see the ring. We could see it Saturn. And before we actually go now to the computer, a few things which I have heard in other videos and, and which I probably have an answer to. So if you have seen the one of Queef, he at the beginning wanted to look at the sun and the scope just turned around in exactly the, in the other direction. Happened to me today too. What I realized is that when you take it out of the box, you have first to calibrate the compass. It is in the settings, there's an option, and then you, can, you have to turn the scope a few times and then it's, the compass is calibrated. So that was the issue there and that's the troubleshooting for it. In another video there was the tripod criticized because you cannot level the scope. Given that there is no, you cannot make them longer, so it is as it is. That is actually true on one side. On the other side, you do not have to completely level the C-star. At the start of each stacking, it configures that. It sees on which axis it is and takes that into account. Obviously, you cannot put it like this or like this. It has to be approximately level. But as long as you have it in on the floor, on a table or something like that, it shouldn't be an issue. And with that, let's stop the theoretical part. Let's go to the computer and see what I did shoot today. Okay, welcome to my computer and welcome to PixInsight. I don't know really why I chose PixInsight for that, but anyway. So here you see actually the sea star standing outside here with the solar filter. So that's the first thing what I did. Have a look what at daylight is possible. Obviously the first thing I did, I was put the solar filter on and for the first time ever, ever made a photo of the sun. I do not have a solar filter for any other of my scopes. And that is the result. I mean, looking at it from this, in this resolution, it's really nice. The spots are very visible. Now, obviously, as soon as we zoom in, we immediately see that the resolution is not that great. But still, I really like that and I will now regularly do some photos of the sun and see how these spots change. The next thing what I did is I had a look what the sea star can do in daylight landscape. So here we have now this wide angle camera, which is on top, the new one. From my point of view, it is mostly helpful when you're looking for a target which you have to manually go to. Like when you wanna look at something in detail, then you have here a very nice overview and when the crosshairs are over the thing you wanna look at, you know you will see it in the other camera. But I think it's also cool here as a, reference because when we look now at this whole picture that is made you see here this little church tower and we can zoom in now here a little bit and yeah this one but you see it's quite far away it's the next village to where i live and here it is in the telescope view and again 
Obviously, if you would do that with a DSLR, with a 200 millimeter lens, you would, you would get the way better result. But that it can do it, pretty cool. The second picture here is actually taken up here. And you don't even see the tower here in this photo, even when we zoom in. But here you see that there's a viewing tower on top of this hill. So nice, but for what can that be useful? I heard some things about bird watching, and I feel that's probably not going to fly, because this, because the movement up of, of the scope is rather slow. You need some time until you're here. It's not like with a DSLR where you simply turn around and you have it in scope. Probably much more realistic in a time where we usually only have our smartphone with us to make photos. If there is a need of making a photo of something far away, you could actually use that. Why not? And then it got actually night. And because it was full moon, the first thing that I tried was obviously the moon. Here is the photo. It's just one exposure. And again, looking it from in that size, um, nice. But obviously, when we zoom in, there is not much detail there. I don't know, perhaps if you would take a video and stack it, it would be better. But here I still feel the S50 will bring the better details, simply because it has not such a wide field. So a higher resolution per arc second. That's definitely in, in such a situation a little bit the drawback here. But the pick is nice, you know. And then the next thing that I tried was M31 Andromeda. And that's a good example that <laughs> when there's full moon, without having a light pollution filter, simply with an IR cut, um, probably not a good idea. So. So that are the limitations very well visit, visible of this scope. With that, I started then with making photos of Nebula. And here we have part of the Western Whale Nebula. That's also a photo that the sea star stacked. It's about 40 minutes done with 20 second exposures. And what I actually did it was still very, very noisy because it was just a rather short integration time. So I let it through Topaz Denoise. It's something I wouldn't do with my photos, which I take with my real rigs. But here, from my point of view, it's all about the fun. It's all about getting a nice pick. So then it also doesn't really matter if now the Denoise invents a little bit something, but it looks pretty nice now. And for 40 minutes, I think that's pretty cool. And with that, we come to the most interesting example, and that's the Pelican Nebula. Here I shot around two hours, so about 200 exposures times 30 seconds. Now, this here is the version that was actually stacked by C Star, so simply what I could save. But here I actually took the subs and stacked it myself in AstroPixel processor and then did a full standard workflow in PixInsight. And this is what I got. It's not a masterpiece, but if you look at it here where everything is kind of oversaturated, the nebulas are patchy. And here we actually see now nicely the structure of the nebula. It's very fluffy, it goes out until here, very faint. So I feel this is a pretty okayish picture compared to that. And so from my point of view, the main message would here be, it's absolutely worth restacking the pictures and reprocessing it. If this is really your main scope and it's more than fun, you really wanna get some as nice as possible pictures out of it. So just for fun, I uploaded this now also into Astrobin as the first picture in Astrobin shot with a Sivo C-Star S30. But let's go back to this here. Let's look at the stars. And you could say this is nonsensical given 
This is not a high precision telescope and nobody's pixel peeping here, but let's still do some pixel peeping. When we look here in the middle, the stars are okay, is they round? Now, if we go here in the corner, you see that they are a little bit eggy in this axis. If we go to the bottom here, we see that they're eggy a little bit in this axis. Other corner. Now we are in this axis and the upper corner, you can already guess it. We're in this axis, which means that the egginess has nothing to do with shooting 30 second exposures. That seems to be okay. But, and that's the fun part for me here, it looks like a back focus issue <laughs> because that's so typical for back focus, right? So that might be also because it's a pre-production unit and it doesn't really matter. You know, we do not want to make here an A-pod picture or whatever. We want to have fun. We want to discover the sky. If I look at it from this size, anything below is anyway getting pixelated then it looks great and I see the nebula and you can get this without having any software, without doing anything. And it's really pretty cool watching how picture by picture it gets better. And it's probably even more attractive than doing the live function in ASIR on a larger rig because there you have to wait three minutes, you know, when you do three minutes, three minutes exposures until the next one is there, so it takes a long time to see the development. While here, the changes in, especially in the first picture, from picture to picture are massive. So if, for example, in a public outreach program, you would like to show people what stacking is and what the effects of stacking are, then this is just perfect to do it like that, where every 20 or every 30 seconds, and the picture changes and gets better and better. So I would say overall, for the first few hours where I actually have the scope now, the wealth of different objects from the sun, from landscape, from all the different objects here at the night sky and having them in a, in a decent form where you can show it to someone, that's really cool. There is really Nothing negative, I can say. Again, not comparing it to a real rig, but simply looking at the 350 US dollars, looking at the size of it, looking at the ease of use. There is so much cool stuff you can do with it. So as mentioned before, from my point of view, that is the perfect Christmas gift this year. Happy to hear your opinion about it. Please leave it in the comments below. So that's my take of the Sea Star. I hope that was interesting. I hope it helped you to decide if the Sea Star S30 is for you. And no matter if you shoot with the Sea Star or with a traditional rig, see you next time and clear skies.